Hi everyone, my name is Sue Becker. I'm a fish biologist, an ichthyologist, and a PhD student specialising and studying uh, lower card catfishes. And today I'm going to talk about what everyone else is talking about, and that's water changes. And I did, I did, I've been doing uh, different research, well, reading into the literature on the topic because it's not really research, I'd say. Um, into the actual topic and I've been doing it for quite a while because I'm always curious just to see whether we're looking at things correctly and it is as a thing turning over water is quite complex there's a lot of literature on the different aspects of it but little to none or none I saw in terms of aquariums so most of it was relating to hydroponics and aquaponics which is really important at the moment because Worldwide, we do have a kind of water shortage. Oh, that plant's going to get annoying, probably. Um, so we do have a kind of water shortage. So some areas are really sparse water and very high in drought. And then also that um, sort of case of um, pollution regarding um, actual aquaculture, which is keeping fish. Bear in mind that these fish people are keeping for aquaculture and for hydroponics, aquaponics, they're going to be eaten, so they're not looking at, looking at long term how this works in 5, 10, 15, 30 years really. It's looking at that short term because you're going to eat the fish anyway. And bear in mind that when you look at studies, it's a little bit more complex than that. So that is the major basis of the studies and because of, I think it's sort of a circulating system. Bear in mind most of these, um, what's it, Pay it, most of these systems, they're going to be a lot more high, well detailed, high tech, have a lot more higher filtration system, they're going to have also a lot better monitor, monitoring. Bear in, well, because fish are actually covered by quite a lot of welfare legislation, and within that welfare legislation does include parameters. And if you're going to own a laboratory, even for selling fish or a zoo, you're going to have to fit within that legislation. So there, unless it, I guess with experimentation, it's a bit more varied, but that is kind of aimed at that. So they're going to have more sophisticated methods. And can you really apply it to aquariums? I don't think so, especially looking at the aquariums that many people are promoting under no water change systems, we don't really have the evidence to. And why do we not have the evidence? Because when the other comparison is a lot of these studies might be looking at, or you kind of have to look at a hybrid of studies for this, but looking at um, how rivers and lakes function, which is a lot more complex. And most of them, I say most of them, um, because not all, is that they have that turnover. So they have an in and an outflow, so a river, a lake, or the oceans, the seas, as a sort of outsource. So it's really difficult to compare to what's actually happening in the wild because they all have a turnover. And I always say, and whenever you think of the turnover, it's probably a lot more than whatever your water changing in and out of any aquarium unless you're on a constant system which even then they tend to be drips because you don't want rapid changes in parameters constantly so that's why i would say really look at wild studies you almost have to it is a phd thesis in it in terms of how much research you need to do and the most important thing about when looking at the literature and why i'm talking about it so much is you've got to critically analyze the literature so you can take one result of a paper and then you've got to look at the other papers um, a major thing I would always say is look for confirmation bias, as in, am I agreeing with this paper or am I looking at this paper but not looking at that one or um, promoting that one because I agree with it. And I think that's so important, even just because you're going to be more correct and more reliable at the time things were published if you treat it with, well, if you critically analyse what you're reading. So it is a lot more of a complex topic than making it, si it's not simplistic at all. It doesn't require one video, it requires probably a series of videos really to discuss the topic 
to go into any detail of changing anything, I think. Um, and even just provide it, citing resources is so important because of that. And bear in mind that if you cite resources, other people can read them um, and then critically analyse themselves. So why would I want to change? So it's not just removing um, nitrates, which yes, plants uptake and plants might also take up a bit of ammonia, but there's a lot more to it than that. And plants make it a little bit more complex um, because particularly plants, different species will uptake different nutrients at the different times. And it doesn't just rely on that. It depends on their optimal or the conditions they're in. In some conditions, they're gonna uptake different um, values of that at different times, maybe at even different states. Um, and also depending on the other nutrients available. If one's particularly low, they might not take up um, and other nutrients I mean minerals. Part of those water changes is those replenishing minerals and it's not just ones we can test for, most people only test for, um, which in terms of nutrients most people only test for nitrates, but uh, magnesium, phosphate, calcium, uh, so many more like manganese, are actually well, even some rare ones, iron, you do have test kits for, but I think it's a lot more complex than that because when you think about horticulture, anyone that's owned plants will think about this, is that different plants have different level requirements of each. So you can't just treat it as in they're all the same because how many different plants are out there? Especially when they're not in ideal conditions, you can't really compare to when they are in ideal conditions. On top of that, a lot of the plants people are using aren't probably the best studied. Take a lot of the alloids, so pothos included. This is a Monstera deliciosa, who is probably leaning on the fish tank. Um, but that's going to grow differently in different conditions, so it makes it really difficult to compare to what's available in the literature in terms of nutrients uptake. And so water changes are great for that replenishing the nutrients that has been depleted, keeping it to that base level, which in an aquarium, we don't even have half the organisms that would be required to do so. So other than that, I would say also fish use up a lot of these minerals. Well. Different minerals are uptaken depending on the diet, where the fish comes from, uh, from the water itself. It's like why people, you should, uh, like humans shouldn't drink just RO water. Fishes do need, um, depending on where they come from, to what extent, uh, minerals from the water they're living in. The main one, uh, I think it's about 50% um, of calcium uptake comes from the water and they're, then they're going to be competing with the plants and their uptake is going to depend on a lot of factors. So whereas if you keep it at that base level it becomes so much, it's a lot like easier to think about. So water changes really do a lot of that mostly, so removing stuff but also don't forget that fishes probably do and we don't really know, I don't think there's been much studies and it's also when you're researching things you've got to look for the right search term. So take a time look at the diets of um, the so zebra pleco. If I type in zebra pleco diet, I'm not going to get much. If I type in hypensistra zebra diet, I probably will get a bit more. But is it a reliable source? Then if I type in, um, looking particularly at journals, so usually I use the key term journal, I'll find a bit more. But I did all of that, and then because I delved through the literature, I found a thesis that looked in it. So you've got to delve a lot further and use different key terms when it comes to that sort of topic. So it is a lot more complicated. and. Water changes are not some simplistic thing where I have plants, they're going to uptake all of that. Then I'm going to have the invertebrates, but do you have all of the invertebrates? And fresh water is not one isolated system. It's not like that stretch of river or that patch is one isolated unit. 
it stretches much further than that further upstream does it do you have the actual organisms that will break things down and that can cover in encompasses a lot of invertebrates and bear in mind these invertebrates often are the larval state of something um, like flies, diptera or even I guess other organisms so that are usually normal terrestrial so you're definitely not going to have them in the aquarium uh, it's so much more complex than that and I think it can't be done like there's so much more to it and at the end of the day it's so even been argued with um, bioactive reptiles. At the end of the day, water changes don't take much time. They don't, out of your life in general, how much time do they take? You can usually make them quicker. You don't need buckets. I don't even have a python. I have just tubing that I have tap connectors for that a hose lock does them. But other vans will do them. You can find a tap connector for almost any and then you could put maybe so the water goes down um, the bath, outside. Outside is the best place, just bear in mind of uh, disease, um, pollutants, anything that's coming from your fish tank, uh, which could be quite a lot, especially um, in terms of disease control. Out the window, it takes no time, out the window, outdoor, just into the garden, if you have one, which is a bit limiting. But there's out of how much of your day does a water change take and if you're going to have that many animals then maybe you need to think about like they do take time to care for and water changes do give you some time to actually look at them and see are they in the best health have I noticed something is one missing is one not looking quite healthy so water changes at the end of the day that and if you're new to fish keeping there's so many like it is a minefield and adding in sort of very sort of de debated complex topics is not helpful in the fact that the papers like you really need to look at the papers and spend a lot of time uh, almost like to review it would take a thesis it does need a thesis but and it's not also not focusing on the species that we're looking at. So the last thing is nitrates, I guess. I was going to end it there, but then I remember nitrates. So a lot of people will argue... So nitrates, we don't really know how toxic they are, I guess. And there's a lot of... Um, so there's a lot of ideas that back onto this no water change system, as in that are promoting that nitrates are harmless. Uh, you can have X, Y, Z nitrates and they have no issues. Firstly, other than what else we can't test for that can still be harmful, that other things, other than water changes won't remove. Nitrates, a lot of the papers actually focus on very few species and there's entirely logical why, because they're species that have some economic importance. And you might think, oh, discus, they have a good economic importance, but that much compared to carp, the whole fishing industry, or both, um, what's it, um, commercial for food, and then sports fisheries, cause fishery, those have a lot more of an economic weighting to look into nitrate, especially when it comes to aquaculture. So they're not actually looking at fish similar to what we're keeping. A major thing is that a lot of the fish we're keeping are one well caught where they experience no natural nitrates, two, they're not even the same taxa, they're not even related. If you were to buy a product that was only ever tested on what lizards, a leopard gecko, would you really trust it for your um, health or treatment? Probably not. So why would you do the same with fish? So we don't actually know the levels of toxicity and there's so much more to that why they're testing for nitrate toxicity and what levels they're measuring things on. And they're using a lot of things you can't measure. So when they're dissecting the fish to look at how it affects the liver, um, liver particularly tissues, they look at growth. A lot of us fish keepers when we look at growth is very basic because we're looking at how like half people don't even notice if their fish grow and it's totally understandable 
So it is a lot more complex than that, and especially nitrates, there's no, like, just promoting that, that idea that they're fine at X, Y, and Z, but the pa there's few papers look at low levels, and there's, I've not seen any papers look at the kind of fish we keep, any of them really, um, unless you keep goldfish. So last thing, so water changes, there are a few sort of situations which might be quite interesting to research. Obviously seasonal change, when uh, parameters do increase, but I would say looking at the parameters, it's not nitrates that increases, it's largely other aspects of nutrients. So reducing or stopping water changes there might not be so useful. Another aspect is in ponds. So in the UK, our temperatures do go quite low, not that low, but quite low. So a lot of pond fishes, their metabolism will be decreasing, decreasing, totally, well, extremely low. So they're not going to be one, eating, two, processing that food. So over that time, I would personally not want to change because one, there's no need to because they're not metabolizing, they're not eating, they're not processing food. They're just living there almost anaerobically, or not even, they do anaerobically respire. They live in sort of at a very slow state. And then, set, then the second reason is when they're in that state in a pond, which is very low temperatures, their metabolism has dropped, they are very in a stress state. And you don't want a war to change that because first you'll rise temperature slightly, which is almost like hedgehogs when they go out of um, hibernation and then it suddenly drops again, they're very stressed. Um, so I wouldn't want to change during that season, but it's only a very short season and then you have, it becomes a very de delicate balance of knowing when they're going into that state and when they're coming out because the fish will lie low if there's sort of high pressure or it's particularly cold that day. Some days they might be eating more than others and in ponds you do, can have those invertebrates. Firstly, they're never really, you can't, there's no way many of them can be introduced to the aquarium and are they actually surviving well in an aquarium state? Especially if your aquarium is pretty much stagnant. Um, or it hasn't got much flow, it's not the optimum one for those invertebrates. In a pond you can get those uh, terrestrial organisms laying eggs, larvae in there, but I would still water change and it's an entirely different hobby in a way, but I think it's worth mentioning because a lot of people do put fish out for the summer. Not that if you're putting fish out for the summer you would, there's no need to water change, you probably water change once before the fish go in. And then you don't really need to ward change as they when they go out to back in. But it's so much more of a complicated issue and it's not simplistic at all. And I would still there's no harm in water changes. I think a lot of fish do come from oligotrophic environments, they are from low nutrient environments. They're not adapted for high nutrients, high mineral content waters, and a lot of the ones we keep actually, uh, just because of the fact of where they're from, probably the actual fact of freshwater ecosystems in general, very few are in that sort of state. So in this video here, I kind of didn't want to make this video, I don't, I don't like the sort of aspects of it, because there's a lot of people so sort of with a lot of like strong opinions that like I like actually arguing against it um, and it is something that a lot of people want to do because it makes fish keeping seem so much easier it's not suitable for any of the fish I keep really it's those sort of systems in general are not so if you want lower cards, if you want discus, if you want um, any of them really, it's not really the right system for them. It doesn't provide the extra aspects to it. Especially in uh, terms of flow rate. Anyway, 
Thank you for watching, I'll end this video here and goodbye.